What's up, everyone? D Crack here. So, we're going to check out a brand new Mr. Nightmare video. It says five disturbing police officer horror stories. Like always, guys, I'll link to the original video down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure and subscribe, click the bell, leave a like. And um, let's get into the video. Five disturbing police officer horror stories. Let's go. My partner and I got a breaking and entering call late one Friday night. I'd never responded to a call like that before, but it sounded serious. A young woman was home alone and heard footsteps downstairs, but when she was on the 911 call, the call was cut before she could give her location in the house. We arrived to the home and entered through the front door, which was left unlocked, which later proved to be how the break-in occurred. Both of us shouted police with our guns drawn, expecting the suspect to be armed. We called out for Anna, that was the homeowner's name. Anna never called back to us. We knew she must have been scared and didn't want to give away her position to the intruder. She did. <laughs> we checked the whole first floor, which was small and quick. There didn't appear to be a basement. Door shutting upstairs drew my partner and I's oh, attention. Oh no! <laughs> I led the way upstairs. All the doors had been shut, so I couldn't really tell which door I had just heard. I told my partner to check that one while I checked this one. I turned the doorknob and kicked the door open, immediately lifting my gun into the air. It was a dark, empty room. I heard breathing in this room, though. It sounded <sighs> like a woman's breathing. I looked at the closet door, which was slid slightly open, no. and I saw half a face, mostly someone's eye, peeking through the opening. Resting assured it was Anna, I lowered my gun and said, Anna, it's okay, you can come out. But she didn't. What, if, it, what if it's not Anna? <laughs> and my partner in the next room over called, Jason, I found her. My feeling in that room suddenly went from at ease to ready to throw up. I raised my gun again. There's some crazy the closet. there's some crazy he woman in the closet. Obey, so I called my partner into the room. He turned on the light and we opened the closet together to see this disheveled, drugged out woman holding one of Anna's kitchen knives. Ugh. With two guns pointed at her, she dropped the knife and we brought her into the precinct. Thank God I was stationed in a safer area of town the next year, and I haven't gotten any breaking and entering calls since then. Oh my god. Some crazy drug woman broke into Hannah's house. Poor Hannah. <laughs> As a state trooper for 15 years. Oh, not the creepy I've experienced piano my music. Share of close calls and uncomfortable situations. This happened over a decade ago when I was still relatively new to the job. I was on night patrol on an interstate about 2:30 a.m. I usually had my car parked near a bush to hide myself from view from oncoming speeding cars, but at this hour I didn't really try to hide too much. I was moving my car and pulled into a gas station that sat on the side of the interstate. It was closed, not because it was late, but rather it was temporarily out of service. I noticed two cars parked in the lot next to each other. There was nothing immediately suspicious about this, but I kept- Is it just me or does nothing good ever happen at abandoned gas stations? <laughs> my eye out just because strange things happen at this uh. hour. I parked my car in a way that I could watch the interstate as well as these two parked cars. I realized that I didn't see anyone in either of those cars though. Now this was quite suspicious. The station was closed and there were no workers here. I exited my car with my hands on my belt and approached the two cars. I tapped on the windows for the both of them. Nobody in either of them as I suspected. I began to walk around the lot as the occasional car zipped down the interstate. I went up to the glass of the closed gas station and knocked on it. I turned around, dumbfounded. Whose cars were these? Just as I imagined they could be in the woods somewhere, I heard someone running from around the building and ask for my help. He was some young 20-something year old man, like me at the time. He what? said his car wouldn't start and needed help. Now I told him right away that that's I was a no little... mechanic and that he'd need to call a towing that's company. That's a little fishy. He practically <laughs> begged me to just check under the hood for a second. He ran to his driver's side and popped the hood. I looked under the hood with him not really knowing what to look for because I wasn't much of a car guy at the time. I asked if his battery died, and when I looked at him, I took note that he was looking around very oddly. He replied, I don't think so. I then looked at the car parked next to him. Whose car is that? I asked him. 
He said he didn't know. He simply parked there to see if there was a porta potty in the back or something. I was reading. I'm sorry, but this dude here is too fishy. Something's off about this situation here, and we're about to find out. <laughs> through this kid's bullshit. Something is Something was off. up here. <laughs> As I looked back at the guy from the two yeah, cars, bold. I saw him looking back at something or someone. I turned and saw another guy approaching me with a knife in his hand. I unholstered my gun and aimed it at him. He dropped the knife and put his hands up. Oh. They both did. I immediately called for backup while keeping the two at gunpoint. I cuffed the one who was holding the knife and placed him in the back of my car and then grabbed the second pair from my glove box and cuffed the second guy. When backup arrived, I went to the back of the gas station where the first guy had originally approached me from. What I found there still holds up to be the most disturbing thing I'd ever seen in all of my years as no, a trooper. No, what? There were two fresh, dead bodies wrapped in garbage bags. No! Cut up in two pieces what? each to fit in the bags. Along with them was also a shovel sitting on the concrete by the woods. The two were planning on burying the bodies somewhere in the woods off the interstate, and it seemed they were in a hurry. What These two the... were a couple of the dumbest people I had ever interacted with, being that out of anywhere in the state, they chose to bury two bodies off an interstate behind a gas station. Going to sleep at night knowing you almost had your throat slit by somebody on the job messes with you, and I didn't get much sleep for a while. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm not a serial killer or nothing, but I have common sense. If you're going to murder or kill someone, bury them out in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of the woods somewhere, not, not right off the interstate behind a gas station. <laughs> uh. I'm a rookie cop currently working the night shift. I'm just a normal patrol officer conducting traffic stops and responding to basic 911 calls. Two nights in a row last week, I was called to the same house. Dispatch had called me to check out the house as someone had dialed 911 and hung up. Well, that's the house a creepy was a couple house. Miles from me <laughs> in my patrol zone. I arrived to the house quickly and turned up the dirt driveway through the trees onto the property. The house was dark, no lights on, no cars, nothing. I parked my squad car on the far right side of the property and went to the front door, taking note that all the windows were properly shut. I knocked on the door and no answer. The door was also locked. For my immediate guess, the place was abandoned, for years by the looks of it. I called to dispatch that the place was abandoned and nobody was there. Then I left. The next night I was working the same shift, and around a similar time, I got a call from dispatch that there was another 911 call from the same house. Only oh, this time, someone could be heard no. crying on the <laughs> other end before the call ended. Some deep web crap right here. <laughs> I was asked to check out the house again. This time I was a little further away, but still the drive wasn't too bad. I pulled up the dirt driveway again onto the property, and again, no lights, no cars. I approached the front door again, and this time it was left cracked open. I knocked on the door while holding the doorknob to prevent the door from pushing open. No answer. I called the dispatch that I would be entering the house, which I was cleared to do since the crying over the line implied an urgent situation inside the house. I drew my gun and entered the house. I tried to find a light switch without luck. I had my gun in one hand and now my flashlight in the other. The house was mostly silent, besides the sound coming from behind a closed door. It was this music is not helping this video. <laughs> the basement door. Uh. I called to dispatch for backup in a whisper. The sound coming from down in that basement was a tone, like a dial tone of a phone. I started walking down the stairs as quietly as possible. I got to the bottom and followed the noise of the dial tone to an old, early 2000s style landline speakerphone. The phone was off the hook, and it was playing the dial tone on speakerphone. I put the phone on the hook to silence the noise. Oh, that scared me. as if it were planned to The sound of that phone. <laughs> as soon as the phone hit the hook, I heard a muzzled laughing type noise in a far corner of the basement. I turned around, and there was some guy standing opposite me in the basement, with his hand over his mouth, and he appeared to be laughing. But it wasn't this genuine laugh, it was more like a sickly, mentally unstable laugh. The guy was holding something in his other hand, I couldn't see what it was at first. But when he raised his hand up to his head, I realized he was holding a revolver. I aimed my gun at him and yelled oh, to drop the weapon. No. 
He paused as he had his revolver to his head, apparently about to pull the trigger. No! So I shot him in the arm twice, causing him to drop the gun. He screamed in pain as I cuffed him and brought him upstairs. I requested a medical team at once. A second squad car pulled up, as did an ambulance a few minutes later. The scariest part about this for me was not that I had to shoot a man in the arm twice, but that I was mere seconds away from seeing a man spray his brains out onto the wall. That is creepy. Who... Who was this guy in this random basement? That's the real question. <laughs> My partner and I got a radio call of a welfare check, which is just a check on the welfare of a person. A woman's ex-boyfriend called because he received text from his ex stating that she wished it had never ended and that she could no longer go on without him. We get to the place, knock, pound, etc. No answer. We call the number the ex provided she and get dead. an answer and <laughs> hang up. So we hear it from the outside window and know she's in there. We say we're going to break the door down if she doesn't answer. We hear some slurred mess of speech. Door unlocks but doesn't open. We open the door to find a young woman, wet, naked, pale as hell, and swaying in one spot. Her hands bleeding. We um, call a rescue ambulance and she's off to the hospital. That's weird. Down to the creepy part. None of the lights would turn on, so we conduct a safety search and find candles lit in the bedroom and bathroom. On the walls were Bible scriptures written in her blood and a tub of brown water, the water being mixed with old blood. I don't know how she survived because that water was dark. She had been sitting in it for approximately three to four hours. So she tried to kill herself because, I mean, this sounds bad, but I don't blame the guy for breaking up with her. She sounds crazy. My God. Uh. Before getting transferred to a different county, I used to work as a police officer in Burlington, New Jersey. Burlington is not a safe place. They say that crime there is 88% higher than the rest of Jersey. And having worked there for a year, I got to learn that firsthand. Now there would be a lot of break-ins, robberies, assaults, and after a while you'd get used to those calls. Sometimes you'd get pretty strange, unsettling calls though. This was one of them. Most Burlington locals are familiar with the McNeil Mansion long abandoned mansion that sits right on the Delaware River. The home was constructed in 1894 to serve as a residence for Andrew H. McNeil and it's as haunted. Well as his wife and four <laughs> daughters. The house had been abandoned and left to decay since 1974 and is now owned by the county. Sometimes there would be kids trespassing on the property to check it out. Sometime past midnight, I was told over the radio by dispatch to investigate the property there was a report by a neighboring house that there were some people seen hopping the fence to the property. Upon entering the property, I noticed a light coming from inside one of the upstairs windows. Part of me inside died a little as I realized someone was in there and that it was my job to go in and get them out. I requested backup into my radio and stated I would be entering the mansion to pursue a trespasser. I scanned the outside of oh, the house no. once more <laughs> looking for an entry point found one of the lower windows was smashed open and easily accessible, and that's how I made my way in. Right away, first thing I did was make my presence as a police officer known. I was inside what appeared to once be the living room of the mansion, rubble covering the whole floor. I heard footsteps upstairs, and I shouted again, expecting them to come down the stairs. When they didn't, that meant it was my job to come up. I went up the stairway and started walking around. There was no way to hide my steps with all the litter and rubble on the ground. I heard something fall in a nearby room. This is when the worry and fear really started to kick in. Probably a freaking drug deal or something. At this point I had my hand on my gun holster ready to react. Though let me tell you, having a gun doesn't make you feel invincible. Huh. I shouted again to try and draw out the trespassers from the room. You ever hear that dumb, overused quote, I didn't sign up for this in the movies? Well, I was pretty much feeling that exact way. I stepped into the room that I thought was where the noise had echoed from. It was some small, weird room with a bunch of windows with blurred glass film. There was a sliding closet oh, door. Oh, this is creepy. Quarters, so no. I, in there. I took out my pepper spray and gave one more warning that I was a police officer before yanking the closet open fully. It was empty. This made no sense. I looked around the room and the windows. They looked to an outside deck, and there was someone standing behind one of them. 
What? I couldn't see anything about their features other than um, the outline of their body. But then I realized there were people at the other windows too. The way they were all looking at me through the window film. Such a ghostly appearance they gave. Like a picture from a kid's horror novel. Maybe it's not actual people. Maybe it's freaking ghosts. I found the door ghosts. to that deck <laughs> in an adjacent room. When I stepped out, the three figures standing at the windows were gone. I didn't see any other way off the deck besides the door I came out through. I saw the flashing lights of a police car through a bunch of trees, parked on the same lot as me. Another officer announced his and his partner's arrival to me over the radio. I met the officers outside the house and pointed up at the deck where I saw three people standing. They were creeped out as well when I described how they all just stood there at their own windows looking in. We searched the whole mansion together. I eventually came to a small room with a window on the first floor. And once again, something was outside this window. I had to step closer to figure out if it was what the heck? Head or not. What the heck is it? When I got too close, the object lowered below the window. Um, I radioed the other officers to go outside with me. We looked around the whole property and didn't find anyone. We searched for another 10-15 minutes before closing up all the entrances to the house and moving on. The scariest part of this for me was definitely seeing three ghost-like silhouettes all standing at their own of the three windows to that deck, looking inside at me. Yo, that's creepy. I wonder if they were actual humans who just escaped, they were trespassing, or if it was actually freaking like ghost. <sighs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction by uh, Mr. Nightmare. Five disturbing police officer horror stories. If you did, make sure and subscribe. Click the bell. Leave a like. If you have any other videos you want me to check out, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, peace.